Sires Turks, Sires Turks, Sires Turks. Welcome to the Science Jerks. I'm your host, Dave Chacho. With me, as always, is your other host, Robert Chan. Hi. And we're back to start a new week with our very special new guest, Ooh. Chad Foglin. Hello, that's me. Welcome to the show. Haven't we gone over this before? It's not a new guest because we have a new guest every week. Technically, the last podcast I did, I um, have completely changed myself with uh, you know oh, physical oh, so surgeries. It's and, the new oh, Chad Fogel. Yeah. The new Chad, yeah, not yeah. the new guest Chad Fogel. No, no, no. It was okay. yeah. They, Dave just screwed up the intro. It's right, right, right. Just swap the, That's the, what the I meant. Order, word order around. We're fine. Okay, we're cool. We're cool. I meant to say this guy I've known for a while who looks completely different. Radically different. Have you lost some weight and or a limb? I gained weight okay. and added right. a limb. Uh, I may be thinking of a different Chad Fogelman. Oh, uh, yes, yes. No, the added limb is under the table right now, so maybe... Right, right. Well, no, it. obviously. I saw, yeah. it's I saw a, that. It's no. an extra arm on my leg. It's, <laughs> it's the rage in uh, India. You guys don't know it, but whatever. We got ourselves a multiculturalist here. <laughs> we don't take kindly to multi-limbed multiculturalists who just <laughs> change their entire identity. Uh, what you what you been doing lately? I uh, Well, I... Um, I've mostly been doing improv with this group called Robert Downey Jr. Jr. Ah, uh, yes. I know uh, them well. Uh, they, they have, have a, a show. They, well, they, we did. Oh. <laughs> but it, it fell to the wayside because uh, Richard from the group, he had to go back to school. So gotcha. He gotcha. did not have enough time. Although I had all the time in the world to do it. <laughs> You know, you, all you need to do is buy these cheap ass mics and just. I know that's. Sweet. I should just pick up the slack. But so I'm you're saying he was lazy. the one that was recording it. Like, yeah, I was just. So I was, now you're just talking. <laughs> yeah, to I was just talking. Recording. Did you see what I just did here to to, to start this thing? <laughs> that's I pressed true. that button there. Press that button there and. I plugged it in. That's yeah, a lot of work. A lot two, of that's two because buttons. I set it all up before you got here. And you know what? You that's sat, neither here nor there. Neither here nor there. Took yeah. all the credit. The point is, it's super easy. <laughs> all right. Well, I I don't know. I'll think about it. <laughs> Seems like a lot of work still. <laughs> Were you a fan of science? Uh, oh, always a fan of science. Okay. Sure, sure. Did you ever um, want to be a scientist at some point? I wanted to be an astronaut. Okay. I mean, well, I think go. what kid doesn't at some point? Yeah, yeah. Astronaut, fireman, policeman, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, dinosaur hunter. Astronauts are yes. scientists. They are. Well, yeah. Well, no, that's the problem, though, is that most kids, once they realize, oh, my God, I have to do what to become an astronaut? <laughs> I have to get how many degrees? And then... And I have to learn how to fly a plane and right. go into centrifuge. Come on, man! Mm -hmm. Well, the big hurdle work. for me was you have to have twenty twenty vision. That's that's what they told me when I yeah. oh yeah that wanted to do it when I was fifteen and had Coke bottle glasses. <laughs> well, that would be a hindrance for all of us. It would seem <laughs> good <Yeah>. nerds. <laughs> yeah. Well, technically, you can't become an astronaut anymore. Now, I mean, NASA program has been what well, right? There are no man, shuttles. Man space side fight. That's why we go to Russia. Yeah. Russia oh. shoot. We'll shoot anything we, up for a We have no way to get them out there or back, but there are some still That's true. floating around. Yeah, if you want to major Tom it, it's totally legit. Just I wonder if anybody's checked in on him since they canceled the shuttle program. <laughs> uh, I'm sure he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> all, we, all we really need to know is if he's wearing the same T-shirts or the same type of shirts, mm -hmm. if he's got any messages for his wife. <laughs> right, right. Who's apparently, totally moved on. But... Apparently, uh, he loves her. Yeah, yeah loser. She, she knows. We haven't heard from him, but we turn on the radio and every hour and a half if she goes by yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. let's do some science alright you fat fucks you're off the hook Chan here with Dave Chacho special guest Chad Foglin <laughs> um, for those of you who, who just can't stop eating Cheetos and not exercising and Complaining that it's all in your genes. It's or if you've been holding off eating those Cheetos, just <laughs> go for it. Go to town. <laughs> Fuck it. Here's the, th here's the thing. Um, they have discovered a gene in mice. Uh, the deletion thereof essentially eliminates obesity. That is a thing that they have discovered. Don't start eating Cheetos yet because we haven't actually figured out where it is in people. And we haven't figured out. How to, no, we have figured out. But we haven't figured out how to delete it safely yet. So Okay, well, if you are a mouse or you... If you're a fat mouse... Friends with the go to mice. Town, oh. We'll introduce you to some scientists. Uh, what they did is... So they just chopped out this gene and they were all happy? What they did was they bred mice. 
there is a gene called the uh, the Plin two gene, and when oh, of they, course. you know the Plin two, uh, Plin Plin two. two. the Plin two gene, not as great as Plin one, but pretty uh, good. Arguably, it's the best gene ever for people who enjoy Chunky Monkey and Cherry Garcia, mm-hmm. such as myself. So we don't know if we have this. Gene no, no, no. Yet. We, do, we do have that gene, but what they did is they bred a strain of mice without that gene, right. and what they found was that uh, they became resistant to obesity. The gene produces a protein that regulates fat storage and metabolism, and without it... They, uh, they became those intolerable mice who are always like, I can just eat anything I want, and I don't mm. put on a pound. Are you saying that at some point we can develop a plume 2 gene extraction? <laughs> 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 then we too can eat as much as we want and never get fat. Yes. Sort of. But the, I, I think I, after you are born and alive, the ship is what? left no! <laughs> because well, don't you have to be don't you have to get rid of the gene before you become a uh, yeah that, living that's, thing? that's what they did but is I mean, there a way to kill a gene i guess you could no, yeah, suppress in, a gene possibly in, in theory because you can't use a retrovirus remove it to mm-hmm. go in and snip out those genes you can snip out a gene or you can just suppress but, but, it uh, i believe at this point they're only doing it in uh petri dishes like we we have you know the cell here. Oh, we right. just Go in and you know, snip out just like the small cells. We haven't figured out but how it, to get if, it into people that can just go around and then snip every. Because if we have the gene in us, there's right. no way to go around and snip it out of every cell. So our great grandchildren will, will yes. never get fat. Yes. Yeah. You oh. <laughs> when, but, you, when you get just as you're getting your wife pregnant, you're just like, hold on, hold on. One second. Take a quip to the doctor. <laughs> Why should they get to live these happy thin because lives? That's the whole point. <laughs> we of had to get fucking fat so that we can give them what we did not have, and we did not have a lifetime of joy and endless cakes. And just mountains of roast beef. Exactly. But you're not thinking of the bigger and picture here. I mean, therefore, no one should. This is going to ruin generations of, of people believing in Santa Claus, Buddha. <laughs> uh, you know, like no, those are, those are just the bad old days. It's gonna it's gonna ruin days of Chris like, Christie of jokes about your mama sits around the house. Whoa. Okay. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> not having fat jokes. That's a lot of your mama jokes. That's gonna an issue. Be it's, put gonna, to rest. it's gonna be hard. I mean, oh. people are gonna read Lord of the Flies and not understand. <laughs> what was this pig? What was Why is Piggy? Why, Why, like, yeah. Why do they hate him so much? <laughs> Isn't he thin like all of us? <laughs> Who was this Kirstie Alley and Why was she so made fun of? <laughs> it's interesting, though, just to, to see how we're progressing and we're finding mm-hmm. so many things that... Uh, because obviously, you know, you can, even without this gene, you could conceivably continue to eat and get fat. But essentially, this sort of... Um, <laughs> Sounds like a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> it eliminates the desire to overeat, which is sort of our it's problem now because... More than the desire, it's also the metabolism. Like they said that the even if the, the mice would overeat, they wouldn't keep the weight on. They yeah. just burn more energy. Yeah, they were more active, but also it helped that they just didn't eat as much. Even when they gave them the high-fat diets that are intended to induce obesity in the mice, um, they just weren't into it. And hmm. that's a problem these days because we still have that old biology which says like eat as much fat and sugar as you can because you're not going to get it and eventually a saber-toothed tiger is going to come chasing you down so you got to be ready for that and now you know we don't have the saber-toothed tigers chasing us anymore but we still have like fuck tons of ice cream and <laughs> chips and you know so basically you're putting out a lot of like ice cream shops <laughs> And like McDonald's, oh, all those God. places are going to go out of business. To the cake boss, I know. I hadn't even considered that. People's birthdays are going to be like, yay, a salad, <laughs> perfect. That's all I wanted. What a horrible future we've brought. <laughs> oh, what have I done? This is horrible. How dare you, science? Hydrosalinology, <laughs> Europa, and beyond. They have found. That would have been the shittiest. <laughs> Toy Story. <laughs> Mom, that's the worst catchphrase wait, ever. Wait, is that Toy Story 2010? <laughs> Roy Scheider is Buzz Lightyear. A fictional character who just wants to go to a dead moon. I'm sorry, I can't do that, Buzz. <laughs> what are you doing, Buzz? <laughs> I can feel my mind going. I just said dead moon, but Europa might not be such a dead moon. It's one of the larger moons of Jupiter, mm. and it's a little bit smaller than our moon. Mm. 
And they just found that there's liquid salt water on the surface Ooh. of this place. Wait, on the surface. Okay, we know yeah. that it's covered in so ice, we're pretty and there's sure liquid water probably underneath. There's underneath. a liquid water ocean all around this moon, and then the crust is ice. And you can see in uh, images that there's big cracks, almost like continents of ice, that oh. kind of shift around. Because when Europa goes around Jupiter... It gets squished and squeezed stretched. and stretched and smushed forces. by the forces of Jupiter, Jupiter, which kind of heats the core and keeps the water water and cracks the ice a little bit. So how many licks does it take to get to the center of Europe? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Someday we'll find out. So a what? One? By ah, 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 ah. talk to Europa. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> if you're wondering what happened, Chan licked the mic and then we cut it out of the podcast. Just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was erotic. I mean, disgusting. <laughs> oh, it gosh. wasn't the pink microphone, so calm down. <laughs> it was the banana. <laughs> So they they found uh, through like spectrography that there appears to be, although we've never been there yet, there appears to be liquid salt water on the surface, and they think that it kind of squishes and shoots up through the cracks uh, from time to time. And this this salt not being sodium chloride, but magnesium sulfate. The magnesium comes from uh, volcanoes. They Under think water volcanoes. No, they think they're actually Above water volcanoes. Neighboring moon volcanoes, they, like volcanoes Io. From, what? Oh, what? So, oh, first of all, I just learned today Jupiter has fucking seventy fucking moons. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, got yeah, a lot yeah. of moons, yeah. <laughs> and like four of them are bigger than other terrific. Mercury and yeah, pl- bigger, Pluto. Some of them are bigger than planets, and Io is one of the biggest ones. I think it's the third it's biggest the volcanic planet, yeah. and it's full of volcanoes. And so Europa is a slightly smaller moon and kind of trails in Io's wake. So it's like the secondhand smoke from Io. Is Io crop dusting? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically. The, this if somehow oh, the that is the most horrible. The sulfates and all the junk from the volcanoes is floating through space and hitting Europa and causing a basically just forming ice water. On the surface. Wow. It Which, sounds like a great place to live. <laughs> if you're on the downwind robots, side. Yeah. yeah. Poor Europa's getting Dutch oven the entire <laughs> life. Uh, but this has uh, pretty cool possibilities for life because, you know, Does uh, magnesium salts salt are life. Cow, cow, salts are so like chloride could, but magnesium sulfate sounds awful. It's not as good on pretzels, Fair but yeah. I don't know how this helps. <laughs> <laughs> but it's more interesting than just water. But there are there are building possible building blocks of they life. are like salts are building blocks like amino acids. I think salts make up amino acids. Salts can be used in amino acid synthesis, but are not required. So kind of. So that's pretty cool. I don't know why we haven't gone there yet. This seems like a cool place, and and we. we... I don't know. Maybe because it's halfway across the fucking solar system. <laughs> well, as I was about to say, we have uh, landed on Saturn's moon Titan, which is much further away. By landed, do you mean we crashed there? No, we landed a. That's usually, how we do. We things. landed a probe in. Uh, I think it was two thousand seven or two thousand. Five maybe, we landed a probe on Saturn's moon Titan, which is very far away. Yes, and it didn't have any chemical sensors, so we don't know what there. But it did take so some what pictures. Did, what did we land? Oh, it took we pictures. Just like a goddamn camera. The on them. Titan <laughs> is a pretty cool place too. It's got like rivers of. Oh yeah, no, no. I've I think, seen NASA's Instagrams. They're really good. Yeah, I like oh, every single. Wait, wait, do you see the vines <laughs> yeah. that they put out? <laughs> so good. We're gonna be vining from every moon in the Here's solar system pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, nice. Here's nice. another rock. Oh, perfect, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, like that. Double tap, double tap. <laughs> when you think of camels, naturally you think of the Arctic. That's my intro for like a, a local news television program. Oh, like right near the end there, where they're like. A puppy? (laughs) Coming up Uh, after the break. (laughs) Camels in the Arctic? What? (laughs) I thought you were actually asking, like, what do you think when you think of camels? And it's like, 
humping. You should think of that when you think of any animals. Yeah, well, yeah, this is a I network <laughs> television show. We do not make humping jokes here. Uh, actually, okay, no, no, no. Hump day is usually reserved for radio. It's your drive time at five. It's hump day. <laughs> 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 Let's get the let out with a double shot of zap. Broadcast radio is pretty much all humping jokes at this point. <laughs> 24 hours. It's all hump day all We've the time. achieved critical mass. <laughs> Every day is Wednesday on K Rock 7247. <laughs> Join us tomorrow where we only say balls. All balls, day. Balls. It's ball, ball, balls. 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 Ball balls. Thursdays are ball days here. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. Uh, we know. At some point in the distant past, the camels did exist in North America. They huh? started in North America. I did not know this until I read this. 45 million years ago. And they, eventually they made their way over to the hot so, parts where it turns out they, they survive really well. So basically all camels are Canadian citizens legally. <laughs> <laughs> Canadian immigrants. They have, they have and, dual citizenship. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it's time for Canada to invade Saudi Arabia and get them back. Bring but, them home. Hold on. By that sanctuary. Hold on. By that logic, all human beings are African expats. Uh, speak for yourself. No, no, no. no. <laughs> all of us. Every member of Homo sapiens. I come from Sicily. All the way Homo, back. You descended from Homo florensis, maybe. <laughs> so they used to be here. Uh, what we didn't realize, they have that fat deposit, which is how they get by in the desert. Which we always learned that that was for the desert, for storing water. That's what I always heard. When that's I was right. Okay. Cartoons told us. That's yeah. what cartoons told us. In fact, that's not the case. Wow. Uh, it, but it basically helps them get through points where they don't have food or water or whatever, and they just use up those fat deposits up there in the hump. So... It seems strange at first, but in fact, why wouldn't that hump? But it's for the same, fat, yeah. generally the same purpose. It's just as hard to get food in the Arctic winter as it is in uh, Saudi Arabian summer. Yeah. Another interesting thing about it was how they found it, because they didn't find like a camel skeleton. And like, oh, holy shit, there's camels out here. They found like shards of it's camel like a, legs. The camel whatnot. ankle, I think they, they found. <laughs> and they did uh, uh, 3D laser scanning. And from that, they determined that it was from an arteriodactyl, which is a large cloven hoofed animal, which pretty much the only one that existed in North America was a camel. And then they did collagen fingerprinting, which is uh, like collagen will lodge itself in bones. And so they drill that out, you know, like they, they drill in, take out the dust and basically get rid of all the minerals and then whatever's left. They were getting collagen injections already yes, back then? Yes, camels wow. have. Camels have always had yeah, big They do lips. have big They're lips. They're vain animals. Mm -hmm. Goldie Hawn is the most beautiful camel I've ever seen. They look good on, t on TV, though. <laughs> the, uh, the the sad thing is that sometimes they do get implants in the humps, if you know what I mean. Uh oh. <laughs> That is I just I don't feel good about myself unless my humps a double D. What is a double D? You can D totally D tell when you sit on them. <laughs> yeah. Wait a second. Because they don't move. They don't yeah. move. They're just, <laughs> they just solid right there. Defy gravity. <laughs> Wait, so basically what you're saying is that camels were in North America, and then because all the continents were connected, they just walked over to Africa? Is this what I'm being led to understand? I think I, they walked across the northern... The land bridge? They had to have gone across the land bridge, right? Because, yeah. like, Pangea was way, way before that. They didn't swim. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they probably walked across, like, you mean, like, across Greenland and over to, like, so Finland they, and well, down I would or have something? thought they would have gone across... The Siberia, other way, like yeah, Siberia, Asia? Down through Asia, yeah. Well, I mean, can you walk across the solid ice uh, of the Arctic Ocean? You mean they went from, over the North Pole? From Canada. You know, it, it can go around the, the side of the North Claus Pole. Are you saying that Santa Claus used to have camels instead of reindeer? Because <laughs> it said that it was above the Arctic Circle that they found right. these camels. So can't you just walk across the ocean in the Arctic Circle? Uh, that is not the craziest thing I've ever heard. I don't know. We should we should find that out. We should figure out the migratory <laughs> what, patterns. For how did these camels get here? <laughs> Get there? Did they just like get to the like the coast of Africa and be like, oh fuck, we can't go any further? <laughs> like, I guess we'll just stay here. Just a couple of them like, we'll swim. Yeah, or, or, or they or would they have just walked completely, kept walking around the earth, <laughs> just, just point, kept going around and around. When they like, reached the desert, they're like, oh shit, how long have we been walking? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not even cold anymore. Ah, uh, fuck it, this is fine. No, let's stay let's here. take a nap. <laughs> I got fat deposits. Ah, oh, wherever is fine. This is great. They got the biggest buildings in the world here. Or maybe maybe it was just for their arthritis. Like, there's nowhere hotter and drier than uh, Africa, so... Isn't it weird, though, how many, like, 
vagina references connect to like the camel's nose of the uh, Joe Camel, and then also like t- camel toe is like a reference to like well, basically the camel is nature's vagina. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it is. It's time for a quiz. It's time for it's, it's time, time for a quiz. We are here live, with, like recorded live, with the quiz masquerist Lee. All alive. Quiz masquerist Jess Lee. How you doing, Jess? Hey, guys. Hey, right. You're going to give us some, uh, you're going to drop some science on us? Yeah. You ready for this, Chad? Sure. I am good at stuff. <laughs> so we're going to work together to try to answer these five questions. Oh, working together. Yes. Okay, I got you. We're doing a collaborative... Synergy. Oh. Unless it, it, unless you want to compete, we could compete. Nah, I don't think that's a good idea. Well, what happened? You guys competed two months ago before I took off. Yeah. Before I left the country. Yeah, well, so many things happened. Maybe you should stop leaving the we, country. We, we got soft. <laughs> we broke <laughs> too, many, too many spirits. Too many guests <laughs> uh. left crying. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Ready for number one? Mm-hmm. Yes. What element do all organic compounds contain? Pretty sure that's going to be carbon. Yeah, I would say that too. Do you agree for real or? I was going to say water, but I don't know. (laughs) Uh, Element. Oh, okay. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> yeah. This, unless this were ancient Greek trivial pursuit, in which case. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? It's a fire, right? The yeah. fire of life. Yeah, yeah they all, they they all, all have God. H and O and C, hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. But carbon that is, is the one question. that's specific to organic. Yeah. yeah. It's C. You guys are right. It yeah, is C. We are. Yay. 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 Everyone wins. <laughs> one, oh, one, oh, one. Man, I was so, you guys are so off with your fucking answers, man. Good thing I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Question two. Been able Number to do two. You. What is the only month that can have fewer than four moon phases? February. I would say February. Like if, if we're talking <laughs> about has to be which February, month is shorter than other months, let's and go with February. February. Yay! Yay. Right. Two, oh, two. They're not super easy questions. We're just really smart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Number three. What substance did Charles Best and Frederick Banting discover in 1922? I want to say uranium and best. I feel like they were both. There were science fiction labels named after them. I feel like uranium is the most sci- science fictiony of elements or substances. More science fictiony than plutonium? Uh, maybe plutonium, but also it's a substance, not element. So uh, what, uh, what else is there? I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go with water. What water? That's a Are good they ancient answer. Greeks? Did they? Wait, 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 wait. wait. 1922 BC. <laughs> <laughs> I think uranium sounds like a good guess. It sounds good I to don't me. Really? No. Uh, that substance, though, that's that says. I mean, like it's it's a. Do you want a hint? Something. No, no hints. We don't need hints. I do. We're too good for that. All right, I'll mouth a hint to Chachio, and you don't get to hear That's it. Weird. Let's just go with uranium. All right, uranium. It is insulin. Aha, water. No. <laughs> <laughs> you were closest. He was closest. Oh wow! So people just had just had diabetes before that. Just had it. They're like not they're for like, long. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> they just swelled up. Their feet fell off, and they died. They're like. Damn. Oh. Hey, there were no autopsies then, sad. at least, right? Sure. The magical foot falling off disease. <laughs> <laughs> number... <laughs> what are we four? on? Four. Four. One, four. All right, number four. We're, we're two for three. Okay. All right. Um, two and one. Right. Two and one. All right, guys. What is the smallest mammal? Like a vole or a... Um, Oh, well, that would be the, like, it's like uh, a little um, isn't there a shrew? <laughs> that sounds really tiny. <laughs> we tried to float titmouse uh, last week as well. <laughs> one of these days, it's going to be an answer. There's a kangaroo rat. 
that's super tiny. Yeah. Uh, a, there's like a Madagascar and a oh, shrew. Wait. I think it's a shrew. It's a mini gerboa. Is there like a type of sea animal that would be really small? A small oh. well, I, also, take into account that they hadn't discovered all animals at the time this question was written. Right. That's why I'm thinking the mini gerboa is not a thing. I don't think there's a lot of sea mammals no, you're that are right. teeny tiny. No, there's not. They're all little... <laughs> sea mammals? No. I, I think it's, I'm thinking either shrew or... Uh, a mini whale. A dwarf blue whale. A baby. Uh, is a baby? an option <laughs> tiny baby <laughs> things an option <laughs> mammals shrunken by mad scientists in labs oh yeah yeah under does the it, atomic does scale? rick moranis figure into this at any point oh <laughs> honey i shrank the world's smallest mammal <laughs> oh my god run um, i want to say now. shrew what do you guys think did you say well, shroom sure <laughs> yeah <laughs> You say a uh, shrew? I think like a yeah, Mad- I think it's a shrew from Madagascar. What's the smallest animal you can think of, Chad? Uh, the shrew. It is a shrew. Yeah. Good job, Dick Chucky. Oh. High five. I was really High not five. confident about that one, but you you pulled it what? off. Well played. Number five. Question number five. What is the brightest star in the night sky? Oh, well, that's the the North Star. It's uh, a... Polaris. Polaris? Polaris, yeah. Polaris is... Uh, no, it, it's... Isn't it Aurora... Sirius? Something. Uh, Siri? Andromeda? Sirius is a radio. Polaris yeah. is definitely one of them. It's the North Star. I would say I know Polaris. That. I think it is the North Star. It's the North Star. That, I know that. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, think yeah. it is. That's, that's, Your answer is or Polaris. Or the sun. Polaris. D- wait, did you say the night, night sky? sky? Night. Okay. <laughs> I was about to jump on whoever said like, oh, it's the sun. And thank you. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> You're an idiot. Shrew notwithstanding. That was pretty I'm good. I'm just going to look at it from all angles. Polaris is, according to Trivial Pursuit, is not correct. What? Oh, no. Whoa, there are oh. two answers that they gave me. It's the sun Sirius, shining off the moon. Oh, also known star. as the dog, dog star. star. Oh, oh, no. That was, those were the two answers? Those are the two answers. It's oh, named okay, after so. Keanu Reeves' band. What? Yeah, the dog yeah. star? Yeah. Oh, damn. So we ended up three and two today. Jess, was, where can they find the, you if they were looking for you? You can find me on Twitter at JLeeRules. Or on LinkedIn. I've almost <laughs> forgotten. I got 328 LinkedIn. connections. Feel free to endorse me for a myriad of skills <laughs> such as SEO, social media, uh, website design, you... HTML5. <laughs> All okay. right. We'll be back at the next episode to redeem ourselves from this hole. Three and two. Three and Jessica two. Jessica has three dumped us into. The art of science. Chacha here with Chan and our guest, Chad Fogland. There's this artist who is trying to create every single possible photograph possible. Was the artist formerly known as Prince? Nope. His name is Jeff Thompson. I have a Jeff Thompson hanging in my apartment. (laughs) <laughs> is it a photo of well, every picture if you have any photo you have a uh, jeff thompson apparently <laughs> he's basically taking control of every single photo possible he created an algorithm that prints out an image and just changes one pixel prints it out again changes one pixel picks it out again changes one pixel and the goal is to create every possible image every possible combination of pixels uh, okay so you have an 800 by 600 image and you make one pixel black and then you make it like less black and less black and less black and less black and then you make the second pixel black and then less black and less black and then you keep doing yep. that until you it's grayscale 800 by 600 then you make so there's 202 two pixels that are i think there's 256 different values for each pixel Mm -hmm. and it's not even nearly that big he's doing a 15 pixel by 10 pixel image Mm -hmm. and it's in grayscale wow lazy right 15 by 10 (laughs) grayscale jesus jeff thompson you pussy (laughs) (laughs) so he's printing out 300 a second all right and they've calculated that to finish this project it will take 46 times 10 to the god damn one two three four seven eight nine ten eleven twelve three Come, give us some scientific notation for that. That's, <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm looking at this, and there's like it's 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 a number that is uh, <laughs> almost a whole paragraph. 
Also, you didn't count this up before. I lost count at 80 <laughs> digits are in this number. Years to complete. Oh, perfect. 46 times 10 to the 80th. Oh, so this is performance art. It's not picture looky looky art. We're not going to ever see the end of this thing. Uh, right. That's, uh, that's job The universe is, is 13 billion years old or maybe closer to 14. And this number that it's going to take to finish this project is way bigger than that. Jeez, uh, I feel bad for the people who, who uh, gave him grant money. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when are we going to see a final project? Um, yeah. need a little bit more time. <laughs> yeah, like three times the length of the universe, basically. <laughs> Wait a, a Google years. But I gave you $5,000. <laughs> You'll get it back. That's why, Whoa, he, that's why he kickstarted it. People are used to failure there. It's a pretty cool project, though, because <laughs> the thing is, like, so this collection of images, if it were to go on, would eventually contain pictures of you with any person in the world. Pictures in 15 of by you 10 with resolution. different haircuts. Pictures of you with different glasses okay. on. Okay, no. In it would also different include settings. Picture, like different uh, checkered boards with different <laughs> colors, <laughs> different um, snowstorms, different versions of pepper shakers. <laughs> yep. Again, 15 by 10. It's going to be a picture of Zelda yeah. or Link. And yes, it. one and day and Link. this algorithm is going to print out a picture of Zelda and Link doing it missionary style. Someday, meaning sometime within the span of multiple multiples of the universe's length. Whereas I could go to the Some internet right now years and find up. that picture in a heartbeat like that. See it? See how much time I did that snap? That's yes. how long it would take me to find a picture of Zelda, Zelda and Link, and doing Link it? getting laid. Yeah, but if you sit in front of this computer that's printing these out, best thing comes to those. Who yeah, are. you won't even have to go look for it. Think of all the things you'll see. Just sit there and watch. Just, just a, a, a gray mountain. <laughs> and then, a, you know, a slightly Darker grayer gray mountain. mountain. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, oh, look, there's a little dot flying over the gray mountain. Yeah. Oh, perfect. There's that thing. <laughs> I love the idea. That's what and it is. That's all he needed to do. It's just an idea. I have an idea. Let's do this thing. And go... That's a great idea. Now move on with your life. But he's got a running video that has all you know the images as they come out. So yeah, look for. Oh, oh, that must be at www.wasteofmyfuckingtime.com. <laughs> that's our show. And that's our show. Thank you very much to our very special guest, New Chad Foglin. Thank you very much. And I plan on changing myself. Again in the next 24 hours. Oh, so. good heavens. So technically I'm old Chad Foglin at this point. <laughs> oh, modern celebrity uh, we, uh, culture I, just throwing things out as soon as they happen. Are I you going to ever it. change back to your old, old Chad Foglin? Mm, maybe in three generations. Ooh, yeah. Retro. retro yeah. Uh, we'd like to have you back when you go back. I'll let you know. When, right. I, when I get things back to normal. When you go back to where you start. <laughs> back to your fetal stage. Mm -hmm. It'll be Zygo. about six weeks. Please welcome Zygote Folkland. <laughs> Go! <laughs> Which is uh, pretty good for a zygote, yeah. actually. <laughs> I was advanced. That's really advanced for a zygote. Uh, if people are looking for you, where can they find you uh, live? Uh, well, <laughs> you can find me on Twitter, at Chad Fogland. Uh, which is, my name is just C H A D, and then my last name is F O G L A N D, like Fogland. Uh, and you know, you could probably look if you're ever in L A and you want to see me perform, uh, look me up at uh, SaturdaySaturdayShow.com. dot com. That's I do a monthly show with those people. That's my when third Saturday of every month. So. And your group, uh, Robert, Robert Downey, Downey Jr. 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 Yeah, uh, you can find us on Twitter. I'm at nine hundred ninety nine RPMs. I'm at Dave Chacho. You can find the show. At the Science Jerks. Yep. And also on sciencejerks.com, the sciencejerks.com. So many science Whatever, jerks. sign us emails. With, you know, uh, go to our site and, and click on the Amazon link, and then uh, yeah. we'll get a little kickback. Yeah. I bought some books today. Amazon Prime. Through our uh, website. So we will, you will, you will get like <laughs> the, get the four cents back on Some that. of the pennies I spent <laughs> on Amazon back in my pocket. Yeah. It's like making money to it's make like money. It's like jerking yourself off. <laughs> 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 Well, you don't have enough black in you. 
think we've had this conversation. And she no, doesn't no. want <laughs> to, Jan, okay, for the last time. 